Aloha, everybody. This is Bear Wasnick from uh, coming to you from Waikiki Beach. The surf's up. Actually, the surf is up uh, on the north shore of Oahu, not down here in in Waikiki Beach. But more than that, the surf's up because today we have as our guest Father Don Calloway. He's so well known as the surfing priest. So uh, we're going to talk story about surfing and about his uh, this great new book about uh, St. Joseph that couldn't have come at a more uh, significant time uh, in, in the world's history and a more more significant significant time in the in the role of men in their families. So we'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak in the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We've got as our guest today, Father Don Calloway. He'll join us in a few moments. I remember one summer I decided I'm going to surf every single day. And this was 25 years ago when I lived in California, and I would, you know, I kept my surfboard on my on my on the top of my car. Uh, they, they didn't even bother to take it off, and just rode down to the beach every afternoon. I remember one day something kind of gnarly happened. I forgot that I had out of my car, and I drove through a car wash. <laughs> <laughs> but I just every single day I went to the beach, and every single day, it was the flattest summer in the history of California. There was like, it was almost like people were saying, "Do you remember back in the olden days when there were waves?" And uh, remember? No, no, there couldn't have been. No, there's ancient stories told that there was a time when waves would break in California. And no, that couldn't be. It's just, it's just a legend. It's just a myth. But it was true. But I went every day, and I paddled out every day. Sometimes in your spiritual life, it's like that where uh, there doesn't seem to be, it seems like the surf is flat. And uh, they're like, where did you go, Lord? Where did you go? Well, he's somewhere over the horizon uh, preparing a monster swell for you. And it's just one, the, the key in those kind of times, in the times of, of some call it aridity or dryness or things just don't seem to be happening, is to just paddle out every day. Our job isn't to make the waves. Our job is to paddle out. Like my mom used to say, the surfers are like the first line of defense. You know, we're the sentries out in the water looking to the horizon and uh, waiting on the Lord. So our job is every day to paddle out and wait on the wait on the Lord and uh, and don't don't lose hope because it's during this time when God doesn't seem to be so present that we grow. It's interesting how so much is established in our life and just the waiting on Him. Uh, we grow in our desire and we grow in our yearning. And I know a lot of you are still having challenges, maybe being able to even go to mass because of what we're going through. And and the desire and the hunger for the Lord just grows and grows to receive him in the Eucharist. So in this time, if you're going through one of those seasons where like, where'd you go, Lord? And like, where's the surf? Uh, just keep paddling out, just keep paddling out. And one day, as we say, in, uh, we say the humunga kawabunga from down under will come, will come. the big wave uh, from a, from a, from a eternity away will come, and you'll be surfing again. Father Don Calloway, aloha. Aloha, brother. Good to be with you. It's so good to be. It's so weird. The last time I saw you, you want to describe what you looked like a month ago when we saw each other two months ago? <laughs> well, a lot of people said I either looked like a prophet or I was homeless because I had a huge beard. <laughs> it was a big beard. I mean, I grew up for almost half a year, and it was it was long, very, very long. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I was thinking St. Athanasius, maybe. <laughs> it was, yeah. it, it, uh, could you store things in there or what, what you know, you should make use of it if it's going to. I probably could have, man. I mean, it was serious. I, I mean, I, I even thought when I shaved it, do they have like a locks of love for facial hair? I don't know, you know, because it was a lot. Of, I mean, I went through, I destroyed a razor, destroyed yeah. that razor. <laughs> yeah. Did it, did, did, uh, did you feel like there was an air conditioner blowing the whole time after you shaved it? Like there's a breeze? Totally. And I was still like, I don't know what you like stroking my face as though I had hair there, you know, 
I was like, it's gone. <laughs> I remember I, had, I used to always have a beard, man. And I, I remember I had, a, I had to make a choice once between Price Waterhouse and Arthur Young, these two different CPA firms. And one said, you can work for us, but you got to shave your beard. So I went to Price Waterhouse. You know, it's a funny wow. how important the beard was. But I remember yeah. I, I sold my beard. You considered donating it. I actually sold mine. I think it got $200. Wow. I, yeah, it was oh, at a United man. Way auction. And oh. people were bidding to have my beard <laughs> shaved off. And when they shaved it off there right during the auction, uh, then my little son, Jeremiah, at the time, he's probably two years old, maybe a little bit younger than that, something, something about that. He was brought up and put into my arms, and he heard my voice, and, he, and, and as he reached out with his hand to reach me, <laughs> his head went backwards. <laughs> he's like, yeah, right. It's, I thought that was my dad, but I'm not sure if it was. <laughs> but I don't, I don't know. Um, so, to, so what was the effect of your, your beard while you were out surfing uh, on the other surfers? Yeah, it was a trip. Like, um, it was pretty great, to be honest with you, because I think it was intimidating because I looked like a, a, a Harley biker out in the lineup. And so I think people were kind of intimidated. And actually, even my friends, they said to me, you look kind of scary, you know, because I would have my hoodie on. So all you would see was my face, but you'd have this massive amount of hair hanging out of the hoodie. So I looked kind of intimidating. So I got a lot of waves, you know, it was pretty <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, now, have you ever gone out and surfed with your Roman collar showing? I have, yes, I have pictures it? of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So uh, oh, does, yeah. Well, what happens when they, when, when do they, is this like parting the sea like Moses? Do people give you a wave or no? Oh, you bet they do. It, it, it freaked everybody out. And nobody would drop in on me. Nobody would do any offense because they thought, you know, they're going to go to hell if they drop in on a priest. So, yeah. So I, what I did was I put my clerical shirt over the wetsuit and uh, paddled out. And I was about choking because with the wetsuit on, it's oh, tight yeah. already. Then yeah. to put a shirt over that with a collar on the neck. I mean, I was about to die. What you is know, it, but, a four, um, four mil suit that you were wearing? Or I know you wear a, a thick suit. I right? think it was a three two. It was a oh, three yeah. two. Yeah. But um yeah, so I have pics of the whole thing. It's it's trippy. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty cool. So so it's like as you surf by you'd bless them. <laughs> you <know? laughs> oh, I'll tell you a, a cool story, man. One time I was in Australia surfing with another priest. Where, where were you? Where in Oz? We were we were at Winky Pop, so right next to Bells. Okay. Uh, Bells was real crowded, so we went to Winky Pop, and it was phenomenal. And we were scoring, and I knew that'd be the only time I'd ever surf there, probably in my life. So sadly, I was committing some offenses. Right, I was <laughs> dropping in on people. You know, I'm like, I'm only going to be here one time, man. I'm going for it. They're not going to. So yeah, yeah. So we we kind of upset some of the locals, and rightly so. But in the parking lot. You know, all of a sudden we changed out of our wetsuits into our Roman collars. <laughs> and those guys, they were looking at us like, we got dropped in on by priests. It was hilarious. <laughs> I'm never going to become a Catholic. No, no but that, you know, can you just imagine those those scenes where the people kind of like, I'm going to go to, I'm going to let the air out of his tire because he snaked me. He dropped in on me. And, yeah. uh, and uh, oh, maybe <laughs> not so much. Don't you think it's interesting how the surfing terminology for, for, for dropping in on someone, which people may not know, when you surf, you go down the face of the wave. And if there's someone already on the peak, they own that wave. And if you drop in on them, that's called snaking. Isn't that what uh, the yeah. snake in, the, in, in Genesis did? He dropped in on God, right? Totally. Yeah. No, there are so many correlations and similarities between the spiritual life and surfing. I mean, we, it's called the green room or the green cathedral, the barrel, right? Right. I mean, there's so many similarities. But that's, yeah. what, he, that's what he did. He said, I'm going to be God. I, this is my wave. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I, I know I've, I've had people drop in on me, and <laughs> I guess I have too myself, but when one person just kind of particularly does that, yeah, I'll yeah. ride up behind them and I'll say, I wouldn't do it, but there are some people that would would, would shoot their board right between your legs, and they, and, they, and, they, and they wonder, who is is this guy behind me crazy? Is he going to do it? What's right. going to happen? And it just, right, right. just enough yeah. to make them kind of wonder you know what's right what what's wrong with this guy well what is your so i, I want to ask you what is your it's hard to narrow it down i know but is there one wave in particular that you'll just never forget that you wrote um yeah actually it was it was in western oz where was um, that that margaret was at, river? Uh, Mar it was Mar margaret river yeah um and i paddled out and i was not ready there was a lull so i paddled out and it looked pretty calm so i thought oh what's the big deal well, as soon as I got out, the sets start coming in and I was terrified because the first set, I mean, it was probably like nine foot and of the wave. And then each one behind it was like two to three foot bigger. And on the fourth one, I mean, that thing was like 15 foot. Oh. I was in complete panic mode and um, I didn't know what to do. So I went for it 
and I dropped in on that bomb and it was a left and I'm a goofy foot. So it was, you know, perfect front for side you. for me. Yeah. But I was terrified. I mean, I shot, I was, I went from zero to 30 in like two seconds, you know, and I was just pumping like a lunatic to go as fast as I could. So I didn't get eaten by this thing. And I popped out the back and I was like, I'm out. I, I, found a, I got out of there. <laughs> yeah. Who's it? Churchill said is nothing more refreshing than dodging a bullet. Right. You, you, yeah. okay, you know, I, and I know there, there's some big wave riders that I know that have ridden, had that, that huge wave. And they're like, okay, I'm done riding big waves. I've dodged enough bullets, yeah. and I, and yeah. I've had, and I've had that experience. There's a, did you see the sign there at Market River of the Ten Commandments of Surfing? No, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> There's I didn't a sign see. there, and I was uh, surfing uh, one early morning in uh, in uh, Secas, Leo Carrillo State Beach in California. Uh, actually, it was in the evening. Our, our photographer David Poo, who I always like to shoot in the in the golden light. Yep. And uh, I'm out there tandem surfing with one of the best surfers in the world, uh, Mary Osborne. And I'm putting her in a lift, and this, these guys see David Poo on the beach with that long lens, and they, oh my gosh, this is our chance. We're going to be famous. We're going to get on the yeah. cover of Surfer Magazine, and um, and we dropped in, and uh, and this guy kept snaking us. And at one point, you could see the trail of his wake of his board. You see yeah. Mary and I behind, and then yeah. you see him uh, dropping in. You can tell that he snaked us. Yeah. And yeah. I and I did that. I I went underneath his board. I put Mary in a lift. I put my board underneath his board and scooped him up on my big tandem board and oh, he's wow. and he's riding doing the dying cockroach on his back like, <laughs> flailing away yeah, and right. and uh, the guy from Margaret River is on the beach and he goes when, when we come in he goes dude dude he broke the 10th commandment he broke the 10th <laughs> commandment what is that thou shalt not snake you know and and uh, and David Poo when he when that guy came to the beach he said I'm gonna make you famous you're gonna you're gonna be famous <laughs> and so he was he got he was the inside back cover of surfer magazine of him of, of him doing that and uh, that's hilarious from then on he was called the snake so yeah don't wow, drop in wow. hey you guys don't drop in on 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 the lord it's better to to ride to uh to to surf in in his perfect will when we get back we're going to be digging into father don calloway in his new book about saint joseph the terror of demons we'll be right back with more of the bear wasnick adventure deep adventure ministries is grateful to notre dame federal credit union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak Adventure possible. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're with Father Don Calloway. That was the fastest 11 minutes of, of, of any show I've ever done. It just <laughs> flew by talking about surfing. Uh, you know, the book, uh, what is the exact title again? I always get it mixed up. Yeah, it's called Consecration to St. Joseph. And, the, and, the, and there's a, a special website for it. What is that? Yeah, so we made it super simple. So just put .org at the end. So Consecration to St. Joseph.org. And how, does, how is Saint spelled? Yeah, it's just ST, so don't spell it out. So consecration to saintjoseph.org, just ST. Okay, I want to I'm going to skip I'm going to fast forward here and then we'll do a, we'll go backwards in time, but since that book came out, what new kind of realization or revelation have you had? I mean, because the book came out at the same time, you know, 6 months later I think it was and then then Pope Francis saying it's a year mm -hmm. of Saint Joseph. What have you learned since you wrote the book? What what have you seen of the power of, of of understanding this since the book came out? Well, I think like the Holy Spirit was definitely behind the timing because the, so the book was officially released in January of 2020, and then in March the whole world shut down right with the coronavirus stuff, and so many people bear told me that you know they were in their homes, locked down, weren't going to work. And they found out about the book, they got a copy, and they said it gave them hope. 
It gave them a sense of peace. It relieved a lot of anxiety and fear mm. about the future because many people lost their jobs or they were on furlough, uncertainties about how they're going to pay the bills. So they found great comfort in St. Joseph. And that's still happening. Like one year later, we've sold over 300,000 copies of this thing. For those of you and, who don't know book selling, that is an unbelievable number. Very, right. very, very rare number of books. That's amazing, Father. It is. It's, it's uh, incredible. And, and the cool thing about that is what that means basically is 300 plus thousand people are being comforted and strengthened by St. Joseph. And to me, that's just awesome. I and, mean, you know just, and you know they're handing it off to others and they're talking. Yeah. Every place I go, uh, if you, people haven't read the book, they're talking about the book. Mm -hmm. So that message is being percolated out, you know, yeah. way beyond yeah. just those who have, have purchased it. Yeah. And what, what, what have you uh, learned? Uh, you're you're kind of riding this wave and you mm -hmm. write the book and then there's several months before it comes out. But after that came out, there's things that you've experienced uh, and seen uh, because of that. Tell, tell me what you've observed in your own life. What revelation, what new thoughts have, have come to you or people have shared with you about it? Well, I, I definitely, you know, people have told me the fruits from it. So just yesterday, actually, I got an email from a friend in Texas where I'm going to be speaking uh, actually this weekend. And he said, I've got to send you this email from this lady who was just healed from cancer, and she attributes it to St. Joseph after doing the consecration. And I'm mm. like, wow. I mean, that's just incredible. But I've, I've also heard about p uh, marriages being restored and healed. Uh, because during the quarantine, you know, a lot of people, they hadn't been together much as a couple, but they were forced to by being in lockdown and things. And so, you know, there was some rub there. And yet when they went to St. Joseph, they found their romance again. They realized, you know, that they've been missing on something and they asked St. Joseph into their marriage in a strong way. And there's been healings there. I've, I've heard from men who said that they used to struggle with pornography so much falling into the sin all the time and the consequences of that, which is acting out on that and falling into mortal sin. They said healings have been happening with that and they're, they're, they're finding them a new freedom in purity. I think that's awesome. That's that that is significant because you know Saint Joseph he loved Mary, and yet he was pure. He was he was mm. a virgin his whole life, as was Mary. Uh, yeah. So that so that so that would be the place to go for men to to seek uh, a strength and power and intercession for in the area of, of falling into pornography and and that that sort of thing. That that's really interesting. Um, mm -hmm. But Saint Joseph he's this kind of mild mannered, meek, softy, right? I mean that's the way the pictures all look. <laughs> I know, right? And I you know. I had to find out, man, because I was like, who are you, St. Joseph? I mean, are you that 90 year old dude in the background about to croak? I mean, because that's what all the art shows you. I'm like, I mean, no guy looks at that and goes, sign me up. I want to be like that. Right. Exactly. So I'm like, no wonder nobody's been paying much attention to you because you just seem insignificant and you're about to die in all the images. So I had to find out what, who really are you? Were you old like that? And I, I discovered the church has never taught that. It was only portrayed that way in art to show that there was never any marital act in their marriage because St. Joseph oh, was too old, yeah. you know, so a noble intention, right? But right. it's actually more virtuous for a young man to restrain himself when you're living with the most beautiful woman who ever lived and to, you know, commit to a life of chastity. That's heroic virtue, brother. So <laughs> that's the Joseph that is the real Joseph. Um, and so I actually commissioned artwork to show him more masculine, strong, holding an axe in his hand you know because he would have things like that so yeah man. yeah well, if you want you, if you guys want to see some of this artwork you can go to the website what is it called again yeah consecration to st joseph.org it has all the the artwork and if you want to see more of it too we have we showed some of it in our last uh, interview with you so if people want to go to the youtube uh bear wozniak youtube channel and 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 scroll backwards on the playlist for the bear wozniak adventure you'll see you'll see some of that artwork um, say, this is a very interesting thing. Mary, who is the greatest, I don't know if great is the right word, but the, the perfect human being other than Jesus, yeah. right? I mean, mm. great, good is probably better than great. But here she is, this beautiful human being, what God intended human beings to be. And then and, and, and the angel appeared to her. But once Mary, once Mary was taken as Joseph's spouse, we don't, we see there's a, there's this change where Saint Joseph is the one who's visited in his dreams, 
mm-hmm. you know, by angels. And there was definitely a spiritual authority within that household. Though Mary was, you know, Our Lady, Our Queen, the you know, of angels, uh, Mother of God. Talk about that unique position of the man uh, that Joseph took in their own household, and what men are in their in their households today. Yeah, this is huge because this is so misunderstood today. You know, um, a lot of people are committing what you could call patricide today, the killing of the fathers, you know, in the sense of, well, we don't need them around and, you know, who needs them? But that's not true. The role of a father is crucial. Look at the Holy Family. So, for example, here you have God in the person of Jesus. He's God. And then you have Mary, who's not God, but she's a perfect creature. She's immaculate. But whose role was it in that family to lead the family in prayer and the, and the practice of, of, of their religion? It was Joseph's, the least of the three members. Could Jesus have done it better? Uh, yeah, he's God. Could Mary have done it better? You betcha. She's immaculate. That's not the point. It's your role as the father and the husband to lead the family in the practice of your religion. And that's what Jesus and Mary allowed him to do, and they delighted in it. Um, And that's what we're talking about when we're talking about servant leadership, sacrificial manhood, not lording it over those, uh, you know, who who are in your care, um, because it's not a competition, it's a complementarity. And so when you see real manhood like that exhibited in Joseph, that's tremendous, because I meet a lot of men who say, ah, you know what, Father, my wife does it better than me, so I just let her do it. And I'm like, buddy, that's not the issue. You think that Mary couldn't have led those prayers better? She could have. But it was Joseph's role to do it, and they allowed him to do it. They didn't usurp his role. And that, unfortunately, today has happened in the world and even in the church. A lot of people don't want Father to do his role. You know, you call me Father. A lot of people want to take over the parish and do everything that the priest does. No, nope. no, no. Right. We l- allow father to do his role and then everything will flow well. <laughs> you know, it, it was it, and it's initiated by the Lord. You know, the, the like we talked about after the marriage, then the angels would come to speak to Joseph about what he needed to do. And, and, he, and he did it. And it's 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 because the role of father is not. We think we call God Father because he's kind of like us as fathers. No, it's quite the opposite. God, in fact, is. There is the, the first person of the Trinity is, in fact, a father. He is the fault. He's father. He's not kind of like a father. He's father. His son was eternally begotten. So um, to be called uh, as the husband in, uh, in the home, to be called the father, is an incredible affirmation of what God intends for us to be and to do. And there's a certain respect for a father. The, one of the commandments says, thou shalt honor thy mother and thy father. There's a certain, there's a certain um, spiritual, uh, um, what can I say, there's a, there's a hole in the spiritual cover in a family if the father doesn't have that role and the family doesn't affirm it. You know, if, yeah. if you step out from underneath that umbrella of protection of the father, even though the father is far from perfect, it makes a lot of mistakes. I know as a father, I made a lot of mistakes. I always um, always tried to do the right thing, didn't always quite pull it off. But if people respect your role as father, if your children and your wife do, yeah. um, then um, then there's a, a spiritual cover. And that's yeah. what Joseph was. He was a protector. We're going to come back and talk a little bit more about, about that. We're talking with Father Don Calloway. Um, I call him the surfing priest, but he's so much more, so much more than that. In his new book, what's the title again exactly? Consecration to St. Joseph. You guys all know about this book. And, <laughs> and uh, you can, go, of course, find it any, anywhere. But if they want to go to your website, what is it again? It just put in .org on the end. So consecration to St. Joseph.org. And we want to invite the men out there to join, to go to our website, deepadventure.com. Uh, women. Tell your men about this. Encourage them because you have that role. As uh, you have that role, that special role of influence with your with the men in your life. Uh, we have a special group called Bears Man Cave, and uh, you can only join it. It's a, it's a secret Facebook group, and men always try to go to Facebook to join, but you have to go to deepadventure.com and press the Bears Man Cave button, and you'll go there. Like right now, we 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 challenge, we encourage. Uh, each other uh, in, in manliness, in manly virtue, and in our in our and being fathers. And like right now, we 
we're going through a whole manly tune-up. We're going through a six-week Zoom video chat once a week to talk about area, every area of our life that needs to be tuned up and setting new goals and then, and then sharing with each other and encouraging each other. And so we would invite you men to uh, go to the man cave. And for, the, for you women, if you go to our website, we have a special place there for our mama bears. You know, mama bears are not some soft little uh, nursery story. I, li- I had a cabin in Montana, grizzlies, and I've come across a, a mama bear and her cubs. And my dad actually got in between a mama bear and his cubs, in her cubs, and he was hunting once. Not a good place to be. The fury and the, uh, the furious love of a mama bear cannot be denied. And so we affirm and we love our mama bears who are part of our, our ministry and pray for us and support us. So go to our website, deepadventure.com, sign up for our newsletter. You get a free download of my most recent book and, uh, and get your men into the man cave. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Daniel the Moon Markham with another episode of Country Up, High Ground, Hill 700. Any U.S. infantry officer worth his or her salt knows about the fearsome bloody battle when the 37th Infantry Division was tasked to take and then hold Hill 700 in the battle for the island of Bougainville in the South Pacific in November 1943. Hill 700 was the highest ground above an air base utilized by the Army Air Force, key to the early strategy in retaking the Pacific from the Japanese. For thousands of years, armies have understood the tactical advantage of taking high ground to defeat their enemies. High ground has important spiritual and religious meanings. As followers of Christ, we should be the kind of Christian warriors, men and women, who battle for the high ground for our own souls and consequently for our families, churches, and communities all for the glory of God. High ground Christians could get high-minded, and that's the danger, of course. With a lack of humility, high ground Christians are a pain in the arse and a discredit to the captain of their salvation. But moral and ethical stature embedded in humility are key in successfully standing for what's right, true, and good, and thus in achieving good for God, community, country, humanity, and yes, ourselves. For such folks, I stand before them and salute in respect. We all rally to spiritual warriors like those in Hebrews 11 Hall of Faith. Taking and holding high ground are strategic for your success and that of others. In doing so, others will follow in your footsteps, which means you're a leader. This is Daniel DeBoon Markham at CountryUp.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak Adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak, but my go adventure vi- uh, guide today is Father Don Calloway. Love this guy. We spent some time, oh man. I got to bring my family, more of my family members. Uh, my wife and I joined you and your mom uh, yeah. in Israel. It was that was awesome. So, yeah, it was. I, I, yeah. I remember getting to surf in Tel Aviv. I know. You and they recognized you there, right? Yeah, it was, it was kind of, well, it was so funny because <laughs> we were surfing and uh, 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 paddled out on a big old board we borrowed from someone. And they uh, at, wondered if we were just beginners because Cindy was on the board with me. And then we said, I said, yeah, just, just learning. And right then the set of the day came and we dropped in and did overhead lift. It was just, like, <laughs> it, it, but it does show you that tribal feeling, you know, um, they were so joyful about it. And, and, you know, just that sense of closeness, just like you would want in the Christian family. But I remember going on the Via de la Rosa in the early morning hours and the rainy day and hearing the rooster crow in the pre-dawn darkness yeah. and thinking about Peter, you know, but um, going back to St. Joseph, 
I, I had as my guest last week, and I'll be having uh, I'll have him on again. Father Vincent Lampert, he wrote the new book on um, exorcism. He's the exorcist for the Diocese of Indianapolis. Um, demons hate authority, right? That's why they rebelled originally, and they're afraid of authority. Um, St. Joseph, terror of demons. What can men learn from him about uh, authority, uh, you know, how they have that role, that protective role within their own family, how they're a protector against yeah. the the demonic forces. Yeah, that that title to me is so powerful because it's kind of like a, a money title. It's like bringing the big guns on the battlefield here, you know, terror of demons. That's an intimidating title. And, you know, why is the, the devil so terrified of St. Joseph? Well, you said it at the beginning there is he hates authority and he hates fatherhood. And so he, he wants to mock it. He wants to ridicule it. That's why he himself is called a father. He's the father of lies, mm. right? That's what we call the devil. So he hates it, but he wants to usurp that authority and make it its own. So he's, he's a father, but he's the father of lies and deception and manipulation and mm. trickery. Mm. Well, he knows that St. Joseph has paternal power, paternal intercession. So for example, when, when Joseph turns to Jesus, even now in heaven, and asks him for something on behalf of us, when we ask St. Joseph to take this to God, well, Jesus hears that as coming from his father. It's a paternal petition, a paternal prayer. And that's got power. The devil knows that, and he's terrified of it. And so St. Joseph in his fatherhood is the mighty terror of demons. And wow, I mean, that's that's incredible stuff. And there's this, there's this uh, interesting, my, my wife, she's a rodeo girl, you know, She's so gnarly, man. She's such a great <laughs> athlete. In fact, we started recently started taking golf, and she's going to get so much better than me so fast. But, <laughs> but we were watching the Lonesome Dove series, and there was there's two two full. There's Lonesome Dove, and then there's the revisit of Lonesome Dove, and and Rick Schroeder plays the role of this young man who, uh, who um, uh, is the son of this one uh, of kind of the main guy, Captain McCarr, whatever his name is. But at the very end, uh, young, young, young Rick Schroeder has been kind of duped into joining a rival uh, ranch. Mm. And the man there is so sweet and so subtle and so manipulative that Rick Schroeder doesn't, doesn't get it. Until at the very end when, when the two forces come together, uh, Captain, I can't remember how you say his name, uh, and, and comes with his, his small army it's just a handful of men, and the the bad guy shows up with Rick Schroeder with his huge band of men, and there's going to be a face off, and uh, and this interesting thing takes place, and uh, the the guy had tried to buy off, uh, had had paid money for someone to kill someone, and uh, and and the captain throws the money bag. They got they got the guy that did that, and he, and. and and, and they got him to confess, and he throws the money bag back at the evil rancher. And uh, why? The, the guy goes, why? This isn't, my, this isn't mine. I didn't do that. And Rick Schroeder changes positions from being next to the, this man who's the liar and manipulator, in the, like we'd say in the role of Satan, and rides over and turns and faces him next to uh, his dad. And he goes, what are you doing? This isn't mine. This bag isn't mine. And he goes, the captain never lies. And so you do. You have Jesus called Satan the father of lies. Yeah, yeah. But you, God, God, God never deceives. God. What, what is the scripture? I'm not a man that I should lie, that I should mm -hmm. lie. So God mm -hmm. never lies. You can count on him 100%. Right. Um, so St. Joseph, as men, he shows us what our role is in our family. Um, mm -hmm. what, what spiritual authority does a man have, and how should he take that? What can he do to exercise that authority in the way that God wants him to? As far as like yeah. just taking spiritual authority, maybe taking water and mm -hmm. saying a, a prayer and blessing the home or. Yeah. And just being the one to lead by example. So, you know, we always hear that axiom like father, like son. Right. And, you know, and it is true that girls, they should want to grow up and want to marry someone like their father. Mm. You know, psychology has warped that into something weird, but it's actually true if they see in their father a virtuous man. A man who they witnessed sacrifice for their mother, his bride, his beauty, when they see him treating her with such dignity and respect and, and calling her beautiful names and talking about how beautiful she is and lovely and giving her roses and all that, that has tremendous effect upon the children. Um, and, you know, that 
that aspect of it has unfortunately been kind of lost in a lot of families today where there's just bickering, there's biting words, there's just that anger and, and, and the children observe that and they see that. And that is, uh, that is not good, especially in the formative years. And I know that myself because I lived through that, right? Mm. I was in many dysfunctional family settings. Um, and so we've got to invite Joseph in to our families to, especially for men, to help them to get it right. Because a lot of us, and I met myself too back in the day, messed it up. You mm. know, I, I, really, I really messed up my manhood. But it was by going to St. Joseph that I learned how to be a man again mm -hmm. and how to be, you know, striving for that, that being a servant of beauty and not an abuser of beauty being one to lay down my life for others instead of just taking advantage of others. There's so much that St. Joseph can teach us. Yeah, I see that image of, of think about this. I, I'll bet you uh, St. Joseph probably hit his thumb with a hammer at one point and maybe even said a cuss word, right? He wasn't perfect, you know. But I would say there's a difference between a nice man and a good man. You know, a good man might yeah. go, you know, <laughs> might not be able to hold back. But a, a nice guy might not cuss, but he never does anything. But a good man does. But I just see him, his hand on Jesus' shoulder, and mm. teaching him and, and talking to him about just 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 the the skill set it takes to be a, a carpenter. And, I, and I'll bet you, all of the time they were together, there was that conversation about, like we have about surfing. Well, carpentry, shaping this stone or sh or making this this ta this this bench, is is like this about life. And I can just see that fatherly love. Mm. I think other thing, one of the things. Uh, about being the spiritual head of the household, and you can see when when Jesus was, I guess that that confirm that uh, not confirmation. What do the Jewish people call that uh, age when they bar mitzvah, right? At that age, okay, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, he 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 stayed at the temple and was in his father's house, mm -hmm. and they went back and found him, and and then it says when he he returned with them, he they, he submitted to them, and grew in stature before both. Uh, yeah. men and God and so even Jesus learned to submit to his parents so you young people that are listening and we have a lot of young people that listen to this podcast um, submit to your father submit to your mother honor them uh, and you do that in a way that's active if you don't if you find something that you don't think is right you should be able to talk up talk about that with them but in some ways the mother is kind of like the chisel and the dad's kind of a little bit like a hammer and if you just kind of submit to what they're they're like you're grounded type stuff uh you might find that god's using them to shape you and, and to and to direct you so um to 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 have that ability to for jesus to submit to talk about God. that how did he submit to joseph how did he submit to his did parents yeah, this is an incredible mystery because he did, right? And that's that really says something about the greatness of St. Joseph because God entrusted his son into the care of this creature so that Joseph could model manhood for Jesus. Because remember, Jesus is not a robot. He's not an angel. He's the God man. He actually so grew he, he actually grew in wisdom and stature. As exactly. He found out more who he was in his humanity, yeah. Exactly. That's normal, learn. right? It's, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and here's the thing that I've, in my prayer, that's come to me since I published the book. Um, I, I, maybe in a future edition, I'll put it in there somehow. But, you know, when God wanted to look like a particular creature, he chose to have facial characteristics of the Virgin Mary because they're biologically linked, right? Mm -hmm. he, she is his mother biologically. Right, so he right. probably looked like her in his cheekbones, eye sockets, his nose or something. Who knows? Um, which is awesome. But when God wanted to imitate a man, he chose Joseph. And they're not biologically linked, right? So Jesus doesn't look like Joseph, but here's the kicker. When you see Jesus, you are seeing Joseph. How? Because I guarantee you that Jesus would have had the mannerisms, the accent. He walked like Joe. He swung an ax like Joseph. He carved wood like Joseph because he learned those things from his dad, from his father. And that's right and proper. And so when you see Jesus, you're seeing Joseph on and some And we're going to see Jesus, aren't we, Father? Yes, brother. And we're going to see Joseph. Can't wait. Can't and wait. And we're going to oh, see Mary. Day. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. This is Bear Wozniak with Father Don Calloway and the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with more. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. 
Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak Adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Bear and Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. still listening i thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station while well, you asked for it here is more of the bear wasnick adventure aloha welcome back to the bear wasnick adventure we want to remind all of you go to our website deepadventure.com and uh, if you sign up for our newsletter which we really 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 want you to do we kind of entice you and coax you to do that because if you do that, you can get a free download of my most recent book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. But we love being in connection with those people that um, that love and, and, and you know listen to our radio show and, and watch our TV show. We have Father Don Calloway, Father Don Calloway with us today. We're talking about the, the role of Joseph. You know, Father, there was this thing that happened uh, around the year, I think it was around the year 350 or around, maybe it was more like around the year 300. When great persecution came upon the church, and down in Alexandria, <clears throat> there were bishops and priests and, 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 and lay people who were forced to deny God or be killed, and many or, or exiled, but many of them, mo many, many, many of them, maybe most of them, did not, did not cave into that. But some priests and some bishops did. And then after the persecution, it was like, okay, uh, um, all those there was a, a false teaching that went forth that said all of those people who are baptized that by this priest need to be baptized again and if you were made a priest by this bishop you need to be made a priest again because that bishop or that priest were, was fallen and they um they fell into sin so it's not valid um people have that same attitude towards their fathers mm -hmm. like because that father isn't perfect i don't have to obey him and their, and their validity as authority in my life i can deny and that and, and, and you know, of course the church refuted that teaching saying you honor the you honor the role of that person and their ordination. Uh, when we're when we have a father or a parent that we that may not be worthy necessarily of our respect, there still has to be that element of respect and honor because of their role. Mm. This is a very difficult subject. Can you talk yeah. about that to the to the are, are, you yeah. know, because all of us have a father, maybe not still alive, yeah. but you know, what, what, right. what, no, what it's a, how do we, how do we, how do we show respect for that role yeah. of that person, even though they may not always be worthy of it? Yeah. And you're bringing up a great point because we, we have to respect him and, and, and you are going to see the deficiencies, the idiosyncrasies, the oddities of your human father. I mean, they're not perfect. And so we have to be merciful. We have to love them. And what does it say in the Old Testament? When, when two particular sons, they see the nakedness of their father, they cover right. it up. It's mm. not proper, right? Well, you can make an analogy there when it comes to maybe your father's particular sins or bad habits that he has. You don't need to expose those, right? Um, well, the, something so crucial today is look at, look at sitcoms or TV shows. Yeah. Pretty much every father pre presented in there, he's presented as a buffoon. The children make fun of their father in, t in TV shows. They laugh at him. They joke about him. They just see him as some fat potato chip eating bum on the couch. That's how fathers are portrayed today. They're so disrespected. Um, and we've got to correct that because, yes, we're all weak and broke. But it says in the Bible, if you honor your father, you will be blessed. Okay. And it didn't say honor your perfect the, father. He's going to have flaws, right? So love him anyway. It's the only commandment that has a promise with it. 
Yeah. As yeah, I recall. Yeah. yeah. You know, my father was very harsh when I was young and he was ambitious and didn't have a lot of time for me. Uh, but when I was at the age of 19, I had this great confusion exper- ex- con- uh, conversion experience, as did he. But he didn't make him perfect right away. Mm-hmm. took maybe another 20 years after that to, uh, to get to a, a really healthy place with him. But I, I remember from the moment I was rebellious towards him. You know, because may, mainly because he didn't spend time with me, and I felt like, why? and that's a that's a word right there for fathers. You have no right to discipline a child you don't spend time with and invest time with. But over time, I saw him change. But once I experienced uh, this conversion to the Lord when I was nineteen, I respected him. You know, I, I honored him, and it was he was almost like a, a be, even at even at when I was married and had a family. Um, I saw this, saw him as a shield, a spiritual shield of protection for me. So be very leery of, of, um, of a spirit of rebellion. It's okay to mm. question and to wonder and to be concerned, but, right. uh, but, but to step out from underneath that, that veil of protection. To, yeah. um, can you, can we talk one, one more time about, um, th- this, uh, this area? I, I think father right now we're seeing in the world, how many people, mentioned to me almost every day are we in the end times now i'm not Mm. saying that we are we might be the beginning of them or maybe we're not at all Mm. maybe it's still thousands Mm. of years away but they're saying that because we're seeing this anarchy in the land Mm -hmm. and there's a there's a demonic uh uh force that we can all feel where where do where do we go in our with saint joseph understanding saint joseph as the terror of demons where do we go in our prayer life or how do we how do we how do we um assimilate that into our into our lives so, as, so yeah. that because I think every father should be a terror of demons too yeah absolutely um, well I think definitely we're living in serious times without a doubt I mean we've got turmoil uh, everywhere civilly even we've got a lot of confusion in the church we've got a lot of infighting a lot of stuff going on today I mean it's unbelievable well look at the life of the Holy Family here you have uh, the the newborn Christ child and yet you've got a madman, a political leader who wants to kill him, Herod, right? So where does uh, the God man or the God baby at that point um, take refuge? In the fatherhood of Joseph. It's Joseph who saved our savior by taking him to Egypt. Um, and, And that's extraordinary. So in the time that we're living in, when some people do want to kill us, or maybe they want to silence us, we live in this cancel culture where if you say something against the man or against you know certain groups, you, they'll shut you down, right? They'll dox you. They'll come after you big time. We, like our Lord, we have to take refuge in the fatherhood of Joseph and in the motherhood of Mary, of course. We know this instinctively as Christians. But now I think the Holy Spirit is saying, you need to place yourself under his paternal cloak, so to speak, Um, and protection, because if you're there, you're safe. It doesn't mean the world's still not going to be chaotic, right? Um, But you'll be protected there, just like God the Father allowed his son to be protected by the fatherhood of St. Joseph. That's why I think right now is the time of St. Joseph. In a world Mm -hmm. of chaos, we need to go to Joseph. It's time to lift up fatherhood again. Yep. Yep. Right. Right. You know, what what I was talking with my wife yesterday, I just said, you know, I don't know if this is the beginning of the end times, um, but I know there's been really challenging times throughout history. I love, you know, I read a lot of history. But if it is to be darker times, then it's an honor as a Christian to be alive right now. It's an honor to be tested, to be tested in different ways. If that's what is to what is to what happened, and our response needs to be just simply as men. What jo- Joshua said: "As for me and my household." We will serve the Lord. As for me and my household, and I remember the time in the New Testament, um, it would be a man and his whole household would be converted. I think it was Cornelius, wasn't it? The first one that, that said about that doesn't mean just adults, but the whole household, children, and even his slaves were converted. We need to we need to bring our whole household to the Lord. And there's there's there is a there is a rift. You know, I lived in California on the San Andreas Fault, right? You know what I mean about earthquakes. You've experienced oh, yeah. them. Mm-hmm. Uh, the San Andreas Fault passed just a few miles from my house, but I but there were times when it felt like it went right through our living room. And that tectonic type spiritual battle that's taking place right now does run right through our living rooms. And it's up to men to step into that gap and to uh, say, not not on my watch. And and I think really there needs to be times of family devotion and prayer, praying the rosary together together. Um, 
And men, I remember Doug Berry has this beautiful testimony when he was first stepping into his his own, and someone the priest said to him, "You need to go bless your your family," you know. And so he got holy water, and he was so sheepish about it that he he went in, and at one point he was blessing his wife. She didn't want to do it while they were awake, and he was blessing his wife. What are you doing? I'm blessing <laughs> you. Um, but in in the man cave, all the men uh, went and 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 obtained holy water at the beginning of the year. And they went through their house, and there's the prayers of the church that you can use, and they bless their homes. And they and, and it's it's good to lay your hands on your child's head and make the sign of the cross, because there is a a priesthood uh, among, uh, in in the laity too. We do have that role as well to some degree, and to pray over your children, pray with them. Every time you go to a restaurant, pray with them. How was your day? Oh well, this person bullied me. Well, let's pray for that bully, and let's pray for you, and let's talk about. You know, invest your time uh, in your family, but pray. Make the sign of the cross over every doorway uh, of your house. Um, pray, men. If you're not praying, you're losing the battle. So, and let you and pray with your family. Pray for your family. Father Don Calloway, where can people uh, find your book again? And what is the name again? Yeah. So the name of the book is Consecration to Saint Joseph, and the website is just Consecration to Saint Joseph dot org. Um, but it's in Catholic stores as well, and you know Amazon, of course, carries it as well. So we invite you guys to to read this book, Father. You know, I still haven't. I, I got to order it. I, you know, I told you I left it. I was. We sold our home in Florida, and yeah. we live in Hawaii full time now, like like I've always lived. And I that book is somewhere in the storage room because we sold it. <laughs> we had two weeks to vacate the house when we sold it, and so I st- all I got to do is go to Amazon and get it because I've got I've. I had it. In my, I was had started the first few chapters, so I have to dig into yeah. it. And I confess yeah. I haven't got to read it yet. But thank you You'll so much. You'll love it, brother. I You'll know love that it. I know that that book to you was like travail to mm-hmm. to write it and to birth it. It was like yep. it was like uh, uh, Elijah on Mount Carmel. And thank you so yep. much for the labor that you you went through to to write that book for us. Thanks, brother. Appreciate that, man. Okay. When's the next time you get to go surf? Ah, uh, you know what? Probably in about three weeks, I think. I'll San Diego? Be able to. San Diego? Yeah, it'll probably be in San Diego. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. But I am going to be going to Corpus Christi. I've never surfed in Texas, so I want to try that. <laughs> I surfed there once, and we were also going to try to do the, the where you surf behind the big sh- freighters. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Father, yeah. Father Goring, Mark Goring was going to take us out, but it, it was too windy. We couldn't, uh, they, it was too buffety. We couldn't do it. Anyway, yeah. we've overstayed our time. We've been talking with Father Don Calloway. Love this man so much. Uh, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go check us out at deepadventure.com. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. You want to do it with me? Aloha. aloha. Thank you, Father Don. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.